from the middle of Europe. Welcome to the GCN Show! Welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by our friends at Wiggle. This week, it's the International Jet Set Edition GCN Show. Emma has been racing in Taiwan, John has been watching racing in Flanders, and Ollie has been watching bikes at the Taipei Show. <laughs> <laughs> we also have news on next year's Tour de France route. Gloves that could save the world. But first, we bust four of cycling's most enduring myths. Yeah, four less things for you to worry about when cycling, basically. Bonus. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that next year's Tour de France route is, well, one for the climbers, with more classified mountains than in any other Tour de France in history. And more on that in just a moment. Yeah, we also learned this week why Dan has gone to Bologna for his holidays this year. Turns out the city has launched a scheme called Bella Mossa, which aims to incentivize people to ride their bikes instead of traveling via their cars. And it's done so by offering beer as a reward, free beer. Ride bikes and then get rewarded with a beer. Sounds like Dan's last 20 years, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? I've had at least eight mineral wards, mineral wards, mineral wards myself. I'm not sure what the others have been drinking. So right now, this week, we are talking cycling folklore. Here at GCN, we do our utmost to share the, the most accurate information and knowledge and insight available about our sport. As well as telling people about what we do, right? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but despite the best efforts, there are still some enduring myths that refuse to go away. Until now, here are four things that you no longer need to worry about. How you pedal just doesn't matter. Yeah, now when GCN started, I'll admit, we were as guilty as the next person for advocating a perfect pedaling technique. But as the years have rolled on, visibly, in my case. More tech has become available, more studies have been carried out, and now we know, categorically, that pedaling technique just doesn't really matter. Mm. And in fact, if you take the fastest and most powerful cyclists and use them as a benchmark, you'll actually find that they pedal less smoothly than, well, the rest of us. That's right. Now, they don't look like they pedal less smoothly, and that's probably why the myth endures, but when you actually look a really detailed power analysis for a pedal stroke, you'll see there's a really distinct power delivery phase and then not much else for the rest of it. No, so that's one less thing to worry about. No scraping, no pulling up and no pedaling in circles. This is one that we've been thinking about for a while and uh, frankly, I'm gonna blame gravel bikes. Oh mate, don't do that. Everyone blames gravel bikes for, well, absolutely everything. That is true, and it's not fair, and in actual fact, in this case, it would be ironic as well, given that the gravel bike is the do-it-all bike. But for many people, it's kind of like a symbol of over-specialization, isn't it? Needing a specific niche bike for a specific niche purpose. Yeah, but the fact is that while one bike is maybe better for a task than another bike, the differences are, well, often pretty subtle. Yeah, you're right. And it's actually been really interesting reading some of the comments underneath the gravel bike versus mountain bike test that we did over in Iceland. And people have pointed out that perhaps I didn't have low enough gears on the gravel bike or that my tires were five millimeters too narrow. And yeah, while those things do bother me as well sometimes, they only bother me when I'm not riding. And that's the thing, isn't it? Like when you're actually out doing what the bike is supposed to do, doing what you love, it doesn't matter one jot. Yeah, you know, there are a couple of points where I pedaled marginally slower than was optimal and I might have been fractionally less comfortable because I had five PSI extra in my tires. But I mean, really, it doesn't affect how much fun you have. No, but I think the real question and the thing that everyone wants to know is that well, gravel bikes are better than mountain bikes. They are, mate, don't worry, 100% better. It blew the mountain bike out of the water. Yes. Uh, but jokes aside there, I mean, we, you can't get around the fact that there are some bikes that are faster for certain things, like an aero bike is faster than a lightweight bike sure. for most things, apart from on steep climbs where a lightweight bike is faster than an aero bike. And yeah, maybe on gravel, you might have a bit more comfort and control on a gravel bike than a cross bike, but the fact is you should never let your bike stop you from doing the kind of riding that you want to do. Do the riding anyway, just maybe do it marginally slower and 
in the case of riding dirt, just put a bit of extra pressure in your tyres. There's no such thing as a millimeter perfect bike fit. Now, I know I'm really throwing the cat among the pigeons here, but bike fit, we're not saying they're not worth it. They are. For some people, they transform a painful ride to, well, a pain-free ride. Yeah, but is there such a thing as a perfect bike fit? No, no, <laughs> we don't think so. No. You can have a good position and you can have a bad position, but obsessing over the millimeters is just wasted energy. Yeah, the great Eddie Merckx, he used to obsess about his bike position and look where it got him. <laughs> to the point, in fact, where he actually raced with an Allen key in his back pocket, apparently, so he could adjust his saddle height mid-race. Now, fair enough, you'll say he's the greatest of all time and therefore obsessing about it didn't do him any harm, but he's also a case in point to show that actually there isn't such a thing as millimeter perfect saddle height because he changes all the time and he was still the greatest of all time. So there we go. Yes, and our very own Dan Lloyd has, well, never had a bike fit in That's, his... Oh. I'm not sure Lloyd is a, a great yeah. example there. Okay, mate. No, there is no shame in wearing protein kit when you're not a pro. That's right. Replica kit isn't frowned on by other sports, so why cycling? Yes, some cyclists will disagree, but showing allegiance to a rider or a team is fine by us. Yeah, hey, Simon. I mean, Emma might have something to say about that, but no, in all seriousness, embrace it. In fact, why not go the whole hog and do what this guy does? This is Lee Turner, and apparently he's a master collection of over 170 protein kits, and he rocks them with pride. Yes, check out his Instagram, because, well, you'll absolutely love it. This is cool. It is absolutely cool. And there we go then, that one and three other myths that we think should be put to rest here and now. But let us know what you think in the comment section as well. Undoubtedly, there are more. Which other cycling myths would you like to see busted? Yes, let us know in the comment section below because, well, I reckon there's a full video about this. That's right. She's not gonna let you wear that jersey, mate. No, don't Sorry. tell her. Not don't, again. No. As we mentioned at the top of the show, Emma has been in Taiwan racing the KOM challenge, to be precise. And this is how she got on. Here I am, back for the third year in a row at the Taiwan KOM. And I'll be honest, I'm a bit nervous because it's the first year that I'm doing this race um, when I'm not a full-time athlete. And it's a little bit different when you don't have quite as much time to train. That said, I know it's gonna be hard, I know it's gonna be painful, it's painful for everyone whether you're at the front or at the back, and I suspect I'll be rather more towards the back this year. But anyway, it's a beautiful climb. It goes from the sea right up to three and a half thousand meters, basically. You go through tropical rainforests and alpine meadows, and it's just stunning. Uh, I can't wait, and uh, I'm looking forward to it, even though it's gonna be quite painful. Well, I wasn't wrong that it was going to hurt. <laughs> I'd sort of forgotten how painful the Taiwan KOM is, uh, but I was reminded today. However, it is absolutely beautiful. We were so lucky with the weather and I really enjoyed it. Um, I got beaten, but by someone who was unquestionably better than me, Lucy Kennedy, very much deserved to win. Well done her. And um, I'm actually really pleased that I got to the finish. <laughs> and uh, I came second, which is also I'm quite chuffed. And uh, I just really enjoyed it. It was so beautiful. It's time now for weekly inspiration, where you send in your amazing inspirational cycling photos, whatever they may be. We get the pleasure of sorting through them and then pulling out our three favorites each week. They're eligible for 50, 75, and 100 pound vouchers, courtesy of our friends over at Wiggle. James, who rounds out the podium this week? With third. Well, in third place, we have Tom from Belak Nubar in the Scottish Highlands. And he brings in this Fantastic. Wow. Photo. I mean, that looks phenomenal. He's obviously taken it as a selfie. Um, uh, as one pro selfie taker to another. <laughs> Recognise that classic <laughs> shot. Back. The over the shoulder, <laughs> look the other way number. That is a classic. Um, but that tr truly does look amazing. He's got the road there. He's got the sun just glistening over the clouds. I think yeah, it's one of the tallest, uh, longest climbs in the British Isles, that one. 
from 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 memory. Mm. But yeah, there we go. No, I do like that. And an inspirational selfie to boot as well. So mm. there we go, Tom. Fifty pounds coming over to you. In second place, we've got this one from Vincent Beck, who is from Bex in Switzerland. He said, switch back every day, and literally every day, because this switch back, where DJ Fairweather won, <laughs> that's a cool Instagram name, uh, is riding the road that leads to my house. So wow. there we go. And admittedly, you are a lucky man that uh, the road to your house is as beautiful as that. But there's something about, isn't it, familiar local roads that you ride every day, they can, they can give you great vibes, can't they? And you can capture perfect shots like that when the weather's good. Mm. Ah, yeah, I like it. There you go. Inspirational photo for me, that one. I, mean, I have to say, I wish I, uh, my home roads looked a little like that. But that is a great picture. Yeah. Hey, true story about uh, near where he lives. I once had uh, eyelid surgery just down the road from Bex. Ouch. Yeah, true story then. More on that later, I guess. Yes, <laughs> some other time, James. Yeah. And in first place, we have this from Piotr in Poland. Cracking pronunciation, James. I'm working on it. And he says, this kind of views make me want to get up early in the morning. And, well, if, yeah, that makes me want to get up in the morning as well. That That's cool, That's a truly wicked view and captured perfectly with the sun just coming over the horizon and that mist just seeping on the water. Yeah. Do you know what's truly inspirational about that, mate? Is the fact that now we're getting into winter here in the Northern Hemisphere. You don't even have to get up that early <laughs> to catch <laughs> moments like that. That's probably like half past eight these days in the <laughs> that, UK. So yeah, that is true. Bonus. I see it every morning now. Truly inspirational. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, there we go. There is your top three for this week. Hope you feel pretty inspired mm. after that. We certainly do. And if you want to take part, in this competition, it's super duper easy. All you gotta do is either pop your photo on Instagram with the hashtag GCN Inspiration, or of course, utilize our uploader, the link to which is in the description beneath this video. Yeah, please do, because we absolutely love seeing all those pictures. It's now time for cycling shorts. Well, let's start off cycling shorts with the big news, and that is that the new 2019 Tour de France route has just been released just a couple of days ago. That's right, and as James mentioned at the top of the show, it's a record-breaking route this year. Mm. More classified mountains than in any other previous Tour de France route, with 30 on the books. And a classified mountain is all categories, so HC, Cat 1 and Cat 2. So you would think one for the climbers, but perhaps it's not quite as simple as that because you have fewer all category climbs, so the very biggest ones. Potentially then, you could argue that the organisers are trying to make for some more attacking racing by having fewer massive climbs that the Skytrain can dominate and more little launch pads. Yeah, well you say that side, but it's more complicated than that because, well, there has been plenty of attacks, we've seen it, but the attacks just haven't really gone anywhere and I think that's the issue. Yeah, that is the big problem, isn't it? Mm. Because it's all very well having places to attack, your problem arises when you've got a team behind that's capable of setting an infernal 400 watt tempo all day, every day. However, if the planets align, you've got to think that maybe this is tailor-made for Roman Bardet and his attack-loving AG to our team. Oh, strong call. Well, potentially, but certainly making it difficult for Team Sunweb, as the TTT is well a lot shorter, so AG2R could potentially limit their losses. And the TTs are also short, so yeah, good for Bardet, and well, not so good for Tom Demula. No, that's right. There are also, notably, three summit finishes that are over 2,000 meters, so unusually for the Tour de France, altitude could potentially yeah. play a factor in deciding the overall victor. Highlight for me, James, perhaps slightly mm. randomly, is stage 15, which features a new climb up to the finish, although what I'm particularly going to be paying attention to is actually where the route goes on the rest of the stage. So it starts in Lemoux, ends in Foix, and it goes through what I think is some of the best road riding terrain in the entire world. Oof. Truly inspirational, Simon. Thanks, mate. <laughs> but anyway, on other news, tour director Christian Proudhon has asserted his desire to wait for it ban power meters. That's right. Is that going to gain traction, mm. James? It'd be interesting to see what it does. More and more people calling for it now. And it does make you wonder, doesn't it? Whereas, it, whereas maybe now's the time for the UCI to push back a little bit more on some new tech. They've done it before, most notably with the Lugano Charter in 1996, where they outlawed loads of crazy time trial bikes that were sprouting up because mm. of increased knowledge of aerodynamics. And so maybe this is another one of those. I mean, the Lugano Charter's had its critics over the years. <laughs> But it yeah. doesn't mean it wasn't a positive influence on 
professional cycling as a whole. La Course and the women's race was also announced at the same time as the men's and well, yes, it's another one day race. Five laps of the men's TT course in Po. And so all those big hopes of a multi-day race as well, well and truly being dashed away. Yeah, I mean, I, I literally don't know what to say, but there we go. It is what it is for 2019 and we can hope for 2020. Uh, mm. Now, one last thing that I noticed at the launch of the tour and La Course was, uh, was Greg Van Avermaet, James, who um, I think he might be a triathlete in his spare time. What? Yeah, take a look at this picture. He's not wearing any socks. Oh, you? Greg. Oh, Greg. Now, not wanting to segue from one slightly shocking piece of news to another one, but we can't ignore this peculiar news doubleheader that cropped up this last week. Johan Brunil, Lance Armstrong's former team director, of course, has just had his 10-year ban increased to a lifetime ban for the Court for Arbitration in Sport. Yes, and while in the meantime, USADA have reduced their ban of team doctor Louis Garcia Del Moral to just five years. Yeah, apparently Del Moral gave truthful testimony, mm -hmm. uh, I put quote marks there for obvious reasons, uh, and therefore that meant that he had his ban reduced. What I find slightly strange about this situation is that there's no mention of him having his license to practice medicine revoked. You'd have thought that doping athletes would kind of contravene the Hippocratic Oath. But anyway, apparently not. So yes. There go. And on more news, Mark Cavendish and his right-hand man, Bernie Eisel, have, well, re-signed to Dimension Data for yet another year, following what hasn't been the greatest year for them both. No, it's great news to see him back next mm. year, isn't it? Uh, Bernie Eisel, of course, had brain surgery this year following a particularly nasty crash back in March. And Cavendish, it turns out, has been battling with Epstein-Barr for 16 months, he thinks. So hopefully he's finally shaken that one off and can go back to his former glory. Yeah. Last bit of recovery news from the Pro Peloton. And Max Balscheid has just shaken off that horrific accident that happened three years ago by getting the metal worker taken out his leg. And he did so, and he saved half a kilo in weight. Wow. I know. That is a lot of metal work. That's uh, positive. Wishing you a very speedy recovery, Max, mm -hmm. in time for next season. Uh, right, now, change the subject. James, I have been delving into the murky world of Kickstarter. As you do. As I do from time <laughs> to time. But this time, in all seriousness, I've seen something I actually want. I think from the first time ever, it's a pair of gloves, mm -hmm. weirdly, designed by a brand called Lofi, with the intention of reducing conflict and aggression on the roads. Yeah. Not convinced. So, how do they do this sign? Well, with this. Oh, I like it. Don't mm. get me wrong, I'm not entirely convinced that it's going to do anything to reduce conflicts and aggression out on the open roads. But, if nothing else, it serves as a good reminder to me that sometimes I probably need to take a deep breath when I'm out on my bike. Yeah. As a lot of us probably do too. Yes, and last week we spoke about a young chap called Charlie Condal, who's from the UK, and he's attempting to be the youngest to cycle around the entire globe. But as he was doing it, he did come into some problems. And he actually had his bike stolen in Australia. He did, poor chap. Now, mm. fortunately for him, as we said last week, it seems like Cervelo stepped in to find him a replacement. But we did joke, didn't we, that he had probably better get a move on before he gets any older. But actually, it turns out that it is serious for him because when he gets his new bike, he actually has a race on his hands because Canadian rider Bjorling Tony is just 17 years old and he's already halfway around the world, somewhere in Mongolia, as we uh, as we present this. Actually, Sai, from his Instagram post, he's just celebrated his 18th birthday. All right. Yeah. Oh, happy birthday, Bjorling. Do, yeah. do we know how he celebrated? Uh, riding 10 hours. Oh, nice. Mm. Probably like you did the day, day before then. Anyway, yeah, yeah, day happy before birthday. That. And uh, certainly, Bjorling is uh, raising money for a worthy cause, the Outdoor Schools Programme in Canada. So, what an adventure mm. as a 17 slash 18 year old. Amazing. Yeah, I can do it. Right, you're a bit old now. Yeah, Sorry, mate. True. Just arrived into Rusla, and I'm, I've never been here before, actually, which is surprising, because I spent a number of years living and racing in Belgium. but. I've always wanted to visit here for one particular reason. It's because there is a cycling museum and today is a day. I'm super excited. Never been here, like I say. And upon arriving, I was presented with this. Yeah, that's right. 
That building there is a museum just for it. There is going to be an upcoming video on GCN all about it and hopefully what's inside of it. Like I say, I don't actually know what is in there because I've never been. But check out this, just for a start, there is a bike route around Rusla and um, yeah, that's right. It's got the famous world championship colors. I'm mega excited. I'm going to leave it now because I'm chomping to get in there. I can see there's someone looking and they're waving me to go in. So back soon. I was just told, oh, we've got a small depot somewhere with a few bits of kit in lying around. This isn't a few bits of kit. This is literally hundreds, if not thousands of cycling jerseys, bib shorts, bikes, all sorts of things like that. It's just waiting to be arranged. An Eddie Merckx football. An Eddie Merckx football. Why haven't I got one? Jan Ulrich's bike from 2007. GCN Tech, this is gonna be amazing. Don't miss it. The results are in from last week's giveaway. And we have three people who are going to be getting the cat eye sink lights sent right to them. That's right, those are sets of three, you remember, with the front light, the rear light, and the wearable light, all of which can be synced together for loads of different reasons. Most notably, perhaps you can switch them all on and all off with just one button. Genius. Anyway, the winners, should we have a drum roll? We've got Stephen Anderson from Canada. We've got Michael Canzano from America. And we've got T. John from Singapore. So congratulations mm. to the three of you. Your cat eye sync lights will be on their way to you shortly. Tech of the week now. Believe it or not, actually, those gloves from Kickstarter, they, they weren't it. Oh, shame. Ollie is out at the Taipei Bike Show with more. Cheers guys, I've just arrived here in Taiwan for the Taipei Bike Show. Today's the demo day and having just got here, I wanted to show you something really exciting. Take a look at this. <laughs> See what I did there? This is the Look 795 Blade RS and it's Look's latest aero bike. It's available in rim and disc brake as you can see this one here and I'm really excited to tell you about this because I actually saw this being made in Lux Factory a few weeks ago but I couldn't tell you about it because it was top secret but now it's been revealed. There's a load of really cool features on this bike so all the tube shapes have been designed with CFD and wind tunnel development to make them as aerodynamic as possible but Look has also focused heavily on making the bike versatile and practical. So gone is the integrated seat post that you've seen traditionally on Look aero bikes. This slides up and down as per a normal seat post, but to make it more versatile, the head is adjustable here so that you can adjust your saddle position and get, well, a TT bike style saddle position. So you've effectively got, if you change the cockpit, a TT bike and a road bike in one because this saddle can be adjusted to be a lot further forward over the bottom bracket, which is a really neat idea. There's been a massive trend in recent years to make aero road bikes as integrated as humanly possible, but this often comes as a, with a penalty with regards to practicality. And Lucas sought to address this and thought about it a lot. So it's got this integrated proprietary cockpit here, but with all these, the way the spaces are designed and the way the cables are routed, it's designed to be a lot easier to work on and also that's a similar sort of story with the uh, seat post that can be swapped as well. But, I mean, fundamentally, this bike looks absolutely stunning. And uh, it's made from over 400 individual pieces. That's something that I learned when I saw them making it in the factory, um, which you can see a video on coming up very soon. I think this weekend, in fact, um, on GCN. So stay tuned for that. And stay tuned for more exciting new tech from the Taipei Bike Show. Until then, see you later. It's now time for hack forward slash forge. Good lord, we've not done that before, James. <laughs> right, anyway, let us get started with this one from Andrew. He sent this in from California. Now, James, I mean, that is obviously a, a bike stand, but it bike looks rack. slightly like a stepladder as mm. well. Yeah, and he's very well and coordinatedly painted the, the ladder and the bike, which actually looks quite cool. Well, uh, I don't know. I wonder whether that's just a red ladder, James. I hesitate from yeah. saying that's a bodge because it's an ingenious use of a step ladder, <laughs> but it's, 
it's a bodge of a bike stand, isn't it? But uh, yeah. anyway, thanks, Andrew. I, uh, let me see if you're serving your purpose. So, uh, <laughs> right, hopefully we can get off to a better start now, James, after that. Yeah, next one in from Steve Burrows, and he's designed this homemade bike packing bag to go under the front of your saddle. Wow. What do you make of that as your well, I mean, packing I, professional? Well, indeed I am. But uh, <laughs> I mean, I personally worry about having having things <laughs> at that particular point in your saddle, you know, not always to put too fine a point on it, but you want to minimize how much you've got between your legs, don't you, when yes. cycling to, yeah. to reduce chafage. And, uh, <laughs> so what would you and, call that? Well, that's just asking for trouble if you ask me. <laughs> But anyway, I mean, you need storage wherever you can find it. And it does look neat, but... Um, he's done a good job of it. Rather, sure. rather you than me having that yeah. dangling between your legs, Andrew. Uh, right, anyway, next up. James, you, you put this one in, yeah. and I can't quite understand it. So this is uh, <laughs> Hannah, she sent in from Rhode Island. I mean, that... that I mean, Halloween... Like made aero bike. Halloween... <laughs> Halloween's on its way yeah. and, you know, everyone's getting their costumes, but why not dress up your bikes? So Hannah's come in with this ingenious way of turning her average bicycle into, well, the Tron bike. Whoa! Yeah! I didn't expect that! I know! Well, fair play, Hannah, there you go! I rate that! Yeah, no, I rate that, that's yeah. a hack! That's amazing! It looks just like the Zwift bikes, don't you know? When they've got, like, yeah, you know, do, done yeah. well on it. Harry, if you uh, if you fancy knocking up a couple of extra uh, Tron bikes, then uh, James and I would, uh, would definitely uh, like those for us. Yeah, great day hack there. Uh, right, lastly, what can you do with a five pound clothing rack? Check this out. Yeah, it's a. Uh, is that a pannier rack? Yeah, it's basically an IKEA basket which has been put on a pannier welded together, and so it's, it's an IKEA basket <laughs> stuck to a pannier rack. Yeah. Wow. But it's it's a, it's an ideal way of carrying your tennis balls. Don't you? like fits like eight ten, more than that. Why are you why are you carrying tennis balls? It's a fairly ins illuminating comment, Jason. <laughs> of all the things you're going to carry around, you're going to take your tennis balls with you. Well, there we go. You've got a load of tennis balls to carry around. Why not <laughs> stick a basket on your pannier rack? Yeah. You don't need to explain yourself, no, James. They'll go red. Right, if you want to submit anything to Hack or Bodge next week, remember, of course, you can do so using the hashtag GCNHack on Twitter, on Instagram, and indeed send us it on Facebook. Or, of course, if you haven't got the message by now, it's the uploader as yeah. well. Link to which is in the description beneath this video. Can't so, wait to so, go through so, How many tennis balls have you got, mate? Ah, oh, you, you quite a few, mate. Do you not play tennis? It's caption competition now, and this was the photo that we gave you last week. We asked you to give us an amusing caption. James, which one have you plucked as our lucky winner this week? Well, the winner of this lovely Camelback GCN water bottle is Thomas Davies for his caption. Fans left confused following reports of a giant Alpacin rider spotted in 2018. Giant Alpacin. Yeah. I've got it! Genius! <laughs> it <is>. Absolutely genius, because <laughs> it's Katusha Alpacin now, but it looks <laughs> enormous on that bike. Love it. Well done, Thomas. Yeah, I really uh, Right. This week's photo is this one taken at the uh, Tour de France presentation. Can I have a go? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait for it, guys. Sorry. So that's Froome and Garen Thomas and uh, John Travolta in the background. <laughs> oh no, out of sleep. I hate you to uh, <laughs> See what I did there? Like a bit of, you know. Yeah, Simon. That, they, yeah. They've tried to make the route yeah, to suit Edgy 2 up, but yeah. Froome and Garant are like, eh. Yeah, Simon. Yeah. I'll just take that now, shall I? We'll, we'll leave that. We'll yeah. Leave that. If you want to get stuck in and uh, see whether you can match that, then uh, just pop your caption in the comment section <sighs> down below. As I'm sure it's not going to be that difficult. Now, before we have a look at what's coming up on the channel, as ever, we are going to have a look at the comments that you've left under the videos. That's right. We're going to start with that gravel bike versus mountain bike video from Iceland. James, what have you pulled out for us, mate? Yes, now Edgardo Riss comes in with, don't kid yourself, Sai, you're riding a mountain bike. Well, yeah, controversial there, but you know, fair point. It's quite <laughs> you know, rugged for a road bike, I'll give you that. <laughs> Next one. Mountain bike, better for mountain biking, and well, gravel bike, better for gravel. Got it. Yeah. John Hollis, you pretty much hit the nail on the head there. 
<laughs> Glad you didn't point that out before we went to Iceland and uh, and rode those amazing bikes for 200 kilometers of the best riding I've ever done. But yeah, thank you very much. Uh, right under the how to keep warm in winter video, genuine great little tip here from the Kai X. If you need to take your gloves off, i.e. for a puncture repair, put them inside your jersey so they're still warm when you put them back on afterwards. In oh, all my years genius. of cycling, I've never thought of yeah. that. Which probably you know shows that we don't ever ride in proper winter here in the UK, but still, genius there. Then lastly, uh, Fraser Goodwin, underneath Emma's video where she taught us all how to do a proper science experiment, uh, he said, good job we had Emma doing this one. I'd imagine an entirely different setup if Dan was given free reign to experiment with bar angles. Very, very good points. Uh, in fact, if only we could go live to Bologna right now. No, he's not no. responding, <laughs> James. He's, I can't get him. Can't get him. Right. Now, coming up on the channel this week: Wednesday, how to train on feel; Thursday, eleven things you didn't know about Zwift; and Friday, ask GC anything. That's right. Then on Saturday, if FTP is dead, what comes next? Mm. We have to do a particularly brutal fitness test, courtesy of the Sufferfest, and then we get to explore just that issue. Then on Sunday, Ollie explains how carbon fibre bikes are made with an amazing tour of the Look factories. Oh yes, looking forward to that one. Uh, and then of course, Monday and Tuesday is the GCN Racing News Show and the GCN Show, episode 304. Wow. I know. Right, we're getting towards the end of the show mm. now, but it is still time for Extreme Corner. Now, last weekend, it was, of course, Red Bull Rampage, as if you didn't need reminding. Don't know about you, James, I thought the new venue this year was a little bit tamer than previous years. Tamer? Yeah, but we have got our hands on some almightily extreme footage, courtesy of Brendan Fairclough. Mm. Check it out. Come on, dog. Yeah! Wow. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. That is quite a drop, isn't it? That is pretty incredible. I, could you do that, side? No. Well, and I tell you what, couldn't do that. A gravel bike couldn't <laughs> do that. That is, I mean, no. fortunately, Neil and I didn't get to do that in Iceland, no. but, um, but you know, obviously we wanted to. But yeah, just, yeah, obviously. Just felt like I needed wider tires. Yeah. And slightly different gearing. <laughs> and no massive saddlebag. <laughs> nor handlebar back. Anyway, fair play, Brendan. That's, yeah. that's some serious riding. Yeah. That is pretty incredible. Right, now that brings us, unfortunately, to the end of the GCN show wow. for this week. Do make sure you check out the GCN shop, of course, for any GCN branded merchandise. And yes. Then what else is on the channel? Make sure you check out the video that Sai did over in Iceland, where he took on the mountain bike with that gravel bike. That's right. No, no massive drops there, unfortunately. No. But it is quite an incredible video, I have to say.